In the meantime, my guests have been sitting patiently, and it's worth the wait, folks, because they, they ooze wisdom as they have served in public service for many, many years. Dalma Sotieno was a minister both President Moyes and President Kibaki's governments, and he was former MP for Rongo, and Joseph Kaguthi, former PC, those days when he had provincial commissioners, Nyanza, Western, Nairobi, they're here to talk about where do we go from here. Gentlemen, thanks again for your time. Let's go straight to Manda Mano Monday, Bona PC. Would this have happened in your time? What we saw on TV, what we saw unfolding, would it have happened? <laughs> yes. Politics is unpredictable. Depends on the mobilization by the politicians. What were your thoughts on it? What did you think of Monday's Manda Mano? Uh, personally, I would not have done it the way it, it, it went. You remember in 1997, yep. after Saba Saba, I came from Nyanza and uh, reduced, just we decided as a security team, let's reduce the tear gas, you just remove the tear gas, remove the police in the streets, allow them to walk. You know, they walked. That time the politicians started at the All Africa Conference of Churches. Then the, the officers were keen to fresh them out, so no. Then they came to railway station. They just marched uh, on, 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 uh, on, uh, on Moy Avenue, Kenyatta Avenue. They came here near to the 10 year anniversary monument. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where they, they killed a special branch officer. This is, you, you just allow them, depending on the circumstances of the day. But that time, I did not want uh, the repeat of Saba Saba when I was in Kisumu that time mm -hmm. to come when they were beating in Ajoy, you remember? Yes. So I, I thought the government was losing very, very heavily, both nationally and internationally. So just with the due. But the, the, every, Jeff, I think I told you last time, every administrative action, judge it during its time. If you judge it outside its time, you run a lot of risk of making mistakes. Like I do not know the appreciation the security teams had in Nairobi, the political interpretation, because it's a political government we are running. Mm. And it, it got to be judged according to its time and the circumstances of that time. So good or bad, I would make a mistake. Unless I judge it according to the way it was that time, right. the way we saw it. Yeah. Waziri, as a former minister, your thoughts of the Mandamano? As a mass movement mobilized masses of Kenyans, what was the objective? Kenya priorities should remain development, development, development. So anybody mobilizing masses just for the sake of masses to be mobilized and to be seen, that is just credit for the leaders. But it should be credit for the republic. Credit for the Republic is what would address more and more development for the country. Less and less consumption. Less and less politics. But if you go and approach where it is politics, 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 what are you doing? You are not addressing the development needs of the Republic. Now to address development needs for the Republic, I would have been much happier if we had those numbers being mobilized for a development activity, are we going to produce more maize? Can you imagine we are importing maize? Kenya, yeah. a republic that has grown maize for so many years. We are soon going to import vegetables and tomatoes and onions and what have you. It's ridiculous. So leadership attention should be addressed towards the development of the republic, beginning with the right technology, followed by the necessary capital for the country to undertake activities that would add the develop, to the development agenda of the republic. Yeah. So my only problem with what the mass action uh, addressed is that none of it is developed. Later on, they picked a few issues like cost of living. Has the demonstration taken it? The demonstration is telling somebody to do it. Why not you? Mm. Yeah. You see, they talked about other issues that would be necessary in the Republic. 
So you are using mass action to communicate to somebody else to do. But what about you? When you are in a leadership that has such a large following, you should be the one doing those things. To reduce the cost of living now, we require activity down back to our agriculture. Would need that we address reduced importation. Now, to reduce importation, we must produce enough to export. Now, if that kind of mass action was going to address what we can produce and export, I would have been very happy about it. But if it is just conveying a protest, you are advancing confrontational politics that is undermining development. Yeah, and now it's going to be increased to twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. That is the most ridiculous proposal, I would say. Mm. Most ridiculous. If it had to be done again, maybe once a month. But to me, conveying development needs of the country by public mass action is not fruitful enough. We should address what is beneficial to the people. Mm. In fact, you are training people, even you are training the youths, that if you not need something, just make noise about it. Yeah. But we should be training the youth, if you need something, learn how to do it. By the way, the tone of the leaders, what do you think of the tone and the language of the leaders? I'm uncomfortable. I therefore would back what the Karaji is saying. Let's try to come to the middle. Even worse, once the, the wars are fought, they end up with uh, a table negotiation. Last time I was on, 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 your, on your bench, you asked me the most tricky problem that I have faced. You remember? Yes. I told you one word, transitions. Whether you are talking about the transition of a cattle deep leadership, a primary school, or a, or a national leadership, like now, if you look at the way they are doing, it would appear they are still part of, they, they, they messed up within the transition. The sooner they get them together to talk, ask what is bothering you and what is bothering you? What circumstances are you, are you facing? What circumstances are you facing? And we bring the elders uh, to come closer so that we can reduce what Moshima uh, Waziri is saying, uh, the efforts of the country towards a more productive yes. kind of agenda. Mm -hmm. But is it true that the government is explaining what they are doing so that those ones can slow down in demanding it? Is it true that those who are making demands are themselves, have they considered what, what is the product that will come out of all this? So both sides, remember <laughs> what we require now are elders, the conscience of society. The elders and the clergy are the conscience of society. And the more they talk, come to, the, to, to a table and close it. Go to the back room. Don't even announce over, over there. Back, get to the back room and you start those negotiations yeah. so that uh, the young blood, uh, because the, what I am fearing and is what is also fearing, they use the time, they use the energy, they use the fun. Then you get the police also getting also excited mm. and start uh, overusing the tear gas and say, what would happen if uh, some injuries of the police officers will come and they, 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 what you see them holding are no sticks. You threaten them beyond a certain level. My fear has been that uh, they extended, I, I was fearing when they were in Isili, Sorry. If the sun sets and you injure a police officer or they feel threatened, they are taught to defend themselves using the gun. They cannot just sit and uh, end up suffering. Okay. So we need, we need a lot of consultation so that we cool down. Unfortunately, this country, Jeff, you know, we don't have a nationhood building policy. Not in the constitution, not in the law, not in practice. So what he is saying, that you are injuring the economy. Then you get, uh, I was getting a, a call from, from Europe somewhere, and they are telling me you are in bad shape here. 
And this is what, uh, what, what happens because the cameras show burning and they show extreme. Yeah. What happens? Why should I go to invest in a, in a place where it's all burning? We, we portray as if we are eating the intestines of the country using our own efforts. Yeah. So the more we, we, we slow down, the, the more we, we create an environment for talking. I would like the clergy, instead of addressing our leaders on the camera, book an appointment with this side, book an appointment with this side. They, they call it the shuttle diplomacy. Shuttle diplomacy. Do it quickly, do it quickly. Because the chest thumping, the other one I'm seeing, where is the end? Can we afford to go lower and lower in terms of the total image of the country? Mm. I, I, I would rather have a reconciliatory kind of approach somewhere coming to the middle. The Catholic bishops today, Waziri, uh, they volunteered uh, to mediate between the president and the former prime minister. Should the two gentlemen, should they listen to the Catholic bishops? Should they? I think they should because uh, the Catholic bishops are well-meaning. These are people who are looking at the country as a, whole, as a whole. What is the image of Kenya you wish to convey to the rest of the world? Mm. Because as a developing country, we'll first need investments from all over the world, technology from all over the world. What image are we giving to the rest of the world in terms of participation in our socio-political development of our country? Yeah. Now, it is so important that anybody organizing any such major activity should be asking themselves, what is the objective? That is like a style of making noise to the colonialists. But we don't have any. Now we have a Kenyan government manned by Kenyans facing the development challenges of Kenyans. So you are part of that, right? Yeah. So we should be asking any activity to assess the contribution it will make to the image of Kenya and to the development of Kenya. Now, it is not like the independent movement days where noise was enough. You have been heard all over the world. The message is clear to everybody else. Those are old tactics whose time should pass and pass forever. Now, if there is an issue, it should be raised and leaders should sit and discuss that issue, arrive at a solution which will have to be implemented by the government. Yeah. So any demonstrations in the future should have very clear objectives. And if there is a high cost of living, you know the solutions where it would have to come from. Kenya has to be taken back to production of what Kenya should be able to produce and have a history of capacity to do so. How do we do that? So that's why I was saying we should think of mobilizing our people to do the very things that would enhance our standards. Yeah. Right now our development, uh, uh, I think, uh, budget is hardly 19, 20% of our GDP. Yet the development needs require something as high as 40% of GDP in revenue to be directed towards development. That would require the, the involvement of each and every Kenyan directed by the leaders to achieve those high standards of production. So leadership time should not be wasted in just noise making. Leadership time should be direct, uh, directed towards addressing specific development issues. Because that is the position we had in Africa. That is the image we have had in Africa. You are now destroying the Kenyan image. You see, yeah. that should not be allowed. And the religious leaders were very right that please, when there are serious issues, as some of which you had already pointed out, sit with the government. We do campaign once a year, when it is once every five years, maybe for a whole year campaign period. That time we allow you to think politics, politics, politics. Talk, 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 talk. Maybe even consumption, consumption, you give people whatever they can consume. For four years, 
we should be very seriously thinking of development, development, development. The best brains, the best thinking, the most active, all should be directed towards solving our long-term problems. And yet, Bonapisi, we are always a constantly in election mode in this country. We never stop electioneering. Imagine. And seven months after the elections, we haven't moved on. Yeah. What is wrong with us? <laughs> Jeff, um, I must, you're asking a personal view, not uh, this time from, from my history of government. I, he has talked about the image of the, of the country. This is a country where, I repeat, nationhood is not there. I, I have compared the constitutions of, of, of Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda, Southern Sudan, Somalia here. You know in this country, there is the, the only semblance of nationhood is in the Kenya National Anthem, that Kitengele, you know where we say, Kenya is Tahili, Heshima. Mm -hmm. Kenya is Tahili. Lakini, it is not me, it's we. Tungane is we. In those constitutions, there is a chapter in the constitution called duties and the responsibilities of citizens. This will not be happening in those countries. No, the constitution will not allow because it will destroy the image, he has used the word image, of the country in front of the other nations. The rest of the and world. That's why uh, I was a BBI fan. And in particular, Article 4. You know, there are people who, who just said BBI, Niba, 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 without reading. Mm. Unfortunately, including some of some top foreign friends of mine, professionals, Unamuliza, Ninini Hutaki, Sijasoma, Uriambi Watu, Sijasoma. Article 4 was coming to introduce duties and responsibilities of citizens so that this kind of uh, confrontation would not have been allowed by the law. But we have, a, we have, we, we have one law, isn't it? Yeah. We have one country. We have one government. We have one head of state, isn't it? All those are there. Yeah. But in terms of cohesion, because we don't have the duties and responsibilities, anybody can blow a whistle and we start reacting in any direction, without limitations. You, you are getting what I'm saying yes, about yes. nationhood. I feel very sad when um, even we sing the national anthem, and I find that we are impatient with the three verses. <laughs> yeah, sometimes and you only fifth, sing one. 59 seconds. We cannot afford you know, to create that that last one, yeah. Kenya is Tahili Heshima. To the extent that in certain countries, even, this, even the media, you find that, ah, uh, you Taribu image in Chietu. And you get them curtailing it, self kind of control, not releasing everything. Yeah. So that what, what is talking about the time, the effort, and the resources we are applying? Is this the best way? Who should have, how can we do it? We ask our politicians, get back to the drawing board, create that nationhood, create controls in order for us, we do not destroy our country when we are seeing. Because there is lacuna in what's happening. Yeah. If you look at the constitution now, I listen to the demonstrators. They are saying it is provided for, we can pick it, we can do this, we can pick. How do we have freedom without controls? They are right. Then on the other side of the government, I am urging, can our government, uh, the questions they are raising, answer them? Who doesn't see we are going through a transition from a terrible situation, world calamity called COVID, COVID which changed even our character. Yeah. That I, Joseph Kagudi, would remain in the same house 
ile tulisikuwa tunasema hado haja wana wake wanakaa na they don't they, they don't get uh, bored yeah. that i can stay in that house and go to these these things yes. and i don't get uh, bored traditionally i ought to come and look for jeff look for for waziri here we, we because that's the way it was but covid came then the drought five years i'm not so satisfied that the rain we are talking about i can see the longevity but the minute i go to ankongugu and look at the weeds in the indian ocean i'm not seeing a long range or, or enough, enough of that rain if we exceed this we have started missing getting dry rivers yeah. we can afford to import food for our people but can we afford to import water and desalination ni 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 we we there's quite a bit of work to be done so let the two sides if i was there i would ask government every evening issue a statement this is what the hope we are give, giving you hope this is coming let let the, that come so that even those who are getting very angry they can see our government you know we have changed the uh, structure of government from 2013 mm -hmm. yeah we changed it it is started being called uruto government right <laughs> this one is being called ruto government <laughs> it starts from being our government to somebody ruto government or somebody else, else. Mm. and you know media inatukibiza wakati mwingine mm. lakini nikikaa pale naangalia ni nini hii sasa and then, uh, yeah, and then deputy government uh, <laughs> sorry deputy president uh, Rick, regarding washagwa says Kenya is a government. Uh, the government is a company. And only those who voted for us are the real shareholders and they will get rewarded. That's what he said. No, those are jokes we don't take seriously, please. Kenya is in competition with the rest of the world. And Kenya is Kenya, one political economy called the Republic of Kenya. Parties are for purposes of picking the leader. Once the leader is picked, he has to work with all Kenyans to develop the country. Hmm. So what uh, Gachagua was saying is just, he was joking. I took it that way myself. He was joking that those who are with us, those who are not with us, please, we are still going to be around. So look at us favorably, hmm. join us. We are going to be, that was his way of appealing for unity in the country, which he knows you don't do in such a simplistic manner. Mm. Mm. Okay, the other thing is, I don't know if you heard this evening, uh, we just got a, some breaking news that uh, Parliament says they are not able to vet the 50 CASs and they referred them back to the appointing authority, the President. The President just told the CASs, report to your various ministries. Executive order, yes, is a government. But how, how, how? You see, that used to happen during Moi's time. No. no. When you are taking an issue to Parliament, <laughs> there has to be a provision under which you are taking the issue to Parliament. Is there some statute or regulation under which it is supposed to be taken to Parliament? This CSS is nowhere. It's not in the Constitution. It has been created. People have been nominated for the purpose. Initially, they were 23. Now they are 50. I don't know if they may reach 100. Mm. You know? yeah. So the issue is right that Parliament had no basis of handling that issue. Then, when the executive then decides to continue with the appointment, either increase or decrease, possibly leave them at 50, the executive has to account to the republic the productivity of these CASs. What are they going to do more effectively under performance management in our system that would justify their appointment at the cost? Cost is five point something billion Correct. in five years. Yeah. He has to show us that the return their services will give to the Republic mm. is much higher than what we are going to have to pay them. Now, Those I'm not saying is not possible. It is possible. The country must always be aware we are in competition with the rest of the world. And we were fairly advanced when you are looking at Africa. 
You must not start doing things that bring Kenya down, please. The image of the Republic had gone so high. What we need is contribution to improve the growth of this Republic. And there are challenges. Three quarters of the country is going to be too dry to produce anything. We have to place a, more, a lot more productive activity in the remaining areas where we have water and where we have crops and other products to generate from those areas. So a simplistic way of handling things in Kenya is a big disadvantage to a country like Kenya that enjoyed global recognition when you are looking at Africa. Absolutely. And can we afford it is the other question. I want to take a quick break, gentlemen, and come back. Can we afford it? I mean, we're going through some, you talked about COVID, there's drought, there's the dollar is going through the roof. This shilling is free falling. Global recession. <sighs> can we afford it? Let the hold the thought. <laughs> Joseph Kaguthi, Dalma Sotieno on the bench today, oozing with wisdom. It's the kind of conversation we should be having, folks. I hope those of our leaders who are leading this nation, 